Welcome to episode 15. Whether you're jump starting your flight career, acronyms are, acronyms are killing you, or MCIs are getting you down, we have it all in this episode of Matter Live. Hey guys, welcome to another Thursday edition of Medic Live. Thanks for joining me. Uh, for those of you who are on Periscope, following me, uh, I'm going to kind of you're going to see me look down from time to time. You probably see an odd angle for Periscope. Uh, so, uh, yeah, thanks, guys, uh, for uh, hanging out with me, watching, uh, being part of the program. If you want to send up some little chats there, you're more than welcome to do so. Uh, trying to try out this new Periscope thing while we do this. So we're just going to get started. We're going to jump right into the show. Uh, <clears throat> So, uh, tonight's episode is episode 15, uh, and we're going to talk, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Mr. Troy Schaefer, I want to send a shout out to him, uh, thank you, don't know the gentleman personally, been following through, through a couple different social medias, and uh, write some very well written articles, good um, uh, supporting evidence and stuff like that, but he wrote an article this week. <clears throat> Uh, and it's called How to Jumpstart Your EMS Flight Crew Career. So I'm going to read a few excerpts for it. I will put uh, down in the description uh, after this is over a link so you can read the whole article for those of you guys out there who are maybe a little interested in it. Uh, so the first, uh, and I'm going to read two different excerpts from it. Uh, the first thing he called uh, this section the big guns. And he basically says... What is the tool that can jumpstart your air medical career? So maybe a question you could ask yourself. A mentor. Wow. Your own personal success coach to help you on the right path. So that's what we need. Somebody to help mentor us along. Uh, someone to keep you focused. Someone uh, to get you results. And <clears throat> our goal is, in the end, uh, is to... Be, a flight, be on the flight crew. <clears throat> so that's kind of our goal. So that's the first one there, the big guns. A little later on in the article, he actually tells us or gives us five tips on how we can get the most out of our mentor. And I think this doesn't just apply to trying to find that flight crew job or maybe getting yourself prepared to be in uh, the flight service. I think this applies to uh, every aspect. Uh, so uh, you can utilize these tips. So here they go. Uh, the five tips for getting the most out of your mentor. Uh, establish time limits for your mentor mentorship. Be careful on, whoa, let's start that one all over again. <laughs> all right, be clear on why you want to mentor, want a mentor. What's the purpose of getting a mentor? Establish communication methods and frequency of contact. So maybe you sit down uh, and decide, okay, we're going to uh, every... Wednesday, every Friday, we're going to get together, we're going to talk about what's going on, how I've progressed, or goals and things like that that I can do to uh, maybe reach that ultimate goal. This is our weekly goal, so we can reach, the, reach that next step or that next level. <clears throat> Vary the activities you do together. Uh, he didn't give any examples, but I think uh, probably um, a good example would be... Uh, different using different aspects within EMS so uh, maybe this week you work on airway next week you work on maybe dealing with because you're trying to be a flight medic maybe you're look, looking at different kinds of pumps and things like that 
Um, don't limit yourself to just one mentor. Uh, you know, they say it takes a village to raise an idiot, and I think that's kind of a funny statement. Uh, and maybe that's not where Troy was going with this, but uh, I think in EMS, uh, yeah, it does take a village to raise an idiot. Uh, we find those uh, mentors that have that one little niche. Uh, some of you guys know I actually work uh, as a mentor or in a mentorship program. Uh, for National Registry prep. And one of the things that we tell our students, uh, or at least I tell my students, and I think the other guys do too, is don't just talk to me. Talk to those people you work with. Talk to your base education educators, so whoever taught you your program. Find that training guru at your service. Talk to everybody. Everybody has a different take, and every every person that you interact with is going to give you more information. It's going to get you in the right direction so that you can um, achieve that ultimate goal. And these, So those are your five tips. Uh, and that's just establish a time limit, be clear as to why, good communication, vary your activities, and not just one mentor. So those are pretty straightforward. Um, our next segment, and I know it seems like we're kind of moving along pretty quick tonight. Uh, it's a little different format. I don't really have anybody, uh, in all honesty, with the holidays. I know you guys are busy and stuff. And you're more than welcome uh, to, again, you can get on Periscope, uh, the little Periscope thing through Twitter. You can download the app. Uh, and you can get on it's Medic Life TV 15 because this is episode 15. Uh, and you can send me some little chats, shout outs, whatever. Uh, <clears throat> interact. But with the holidays and stuff, uh, I'm probably going to uh, just be doing a lot more of this kind of interaction, showing some uh, pre recorded videos because I'm having to do this around you guys' schedule. And I understand it. And I thank you guys for. Uh, participating. So let's talk about segment two. Uh, I was teaching a class today and I got cracked up with the guys. They were just absolutely had me rolling. Uh, I don't even uh, know how we even got through the class in all honesty. Um, we were talking about acronyms. We did a professional development, uh, I don't know, maybe six months, a year ago, and we talked about <laughs> death by acronyms. EMS is horrible. One of the guys that day in the class said, you know, if you've ever been in the military, it's worse. Well, as some of you guys know, I spent my time in the Marine Corps. Uh, yes, Super Fi guys, we love our uh, acronyms, but holy mess, man. Uh, in EMS, our acronyms are just, it's ridiculous. Uh, we've gotten out of control. Uh, and we have some simple ones that are kind of that universal we use for every patient, but then we start kind of adding in stuff. So here are some of the more simple ones. OPQRST, right? Onset, provocation, quality, radiation, severity, and time. Those are those questions that you ask that patient the old, hey, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the most pain, 0 being no pain at all, that kind of stuff. Those are those OPQRST questions we're looking, we're trying to find out that information about our patient. Uh, that sample history. Ah, some people hate sample. They don't really like that acronym. But I think it does serve a purpose. Um, we want to know about their allergies, and we don't want to know just about those what are your medical allergies? We want to know all of them. My favorite thing is uh, to be multiple M's. What medication do you take? What medication are you supposed to take? How often do you actually take this medication? Uh, and uh, how often are you actually supposed to take it? So yeah, it's that whole, let's really drill down to it. Um, 
decap BTLS. Some of you guys may know BTLS Tick or BIC, B I C. Uh, <clears throat> it is. Um, Well, it's an interesting acronym. We say it over and over and over, but what does it really mean? Well, what it really means is you start from head to toe, and you look at everything. You look for those abnormal findings. We love our acronyms. They're killing us. AOU tips. OMG. WTF. Right? We, it just keeps getting worse and worse. But that's a good one for altered mental status. Sludge, dumbbell, I don't know, there's tons of them out there. My favorite one from today was I-O-N-O. I-O-N-O. And you guys may be scratching your head going, what? I-O-N-O. -O. Well, it was hard for me. I didn't figure it out. If you figure it out, you're smarter than the average bear, or at least smarter than this bear. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know. Now, I'm not really sure how you get that from I-O-N-O, -O, but alrighty then. So are there death by acronyms? And I think, yes, sir, there is. Not only that, but text speak, text Typing in our PCRs, in our everyday life. My question is, uh, and yes, uh, I have a degree in English, so, well, yes, yes, I'm from the South. No, I don't speak good English. I can write it pretty well. Um, and I know you guys get uh, tickled at me, some of the stuff that I say. Uh, but, um,. <sighs> We've got to make a better effort. Let's get away from the acronyms. Let's talk plainly to each other. Let's write plainly. Let's elevate that discussion, that level of debate within EMS. Let's make people see us other than just ambulance drivers. And we can start with something as simple as, let's stop killing ourselves with acronyms. All right. It's been a bad news week in EMS. It really has. Um, we started ending up, well, it ended up last week. Um, and you're going to hear a rant uh, from the old GT medic uh, today. I told you guys to be expecting it. I don't think he was as happy with uh, his rant, but uh, I think it goes to this last segment really well. Uh, and it's about the stabbing uh, in uh, Pennsylvania, I believe uh, it was. Uh, but this segment is really about MCIs, shootings, uh, how we respond to that dangerous scene. Uh, EMS is inherently dangerous. We go and we show up to people's lives in their worst time in most of the cases. This is that worst event in their life. Um, so yesterday, um, yeah, it was yesterday, uh, California. All honesty, guys, I've read some of the stuff. I haven't just been uh, super crazy trying to figure out what all was going on, who was responsible. Don't really want to get into much of a t political debate. Uh, I, don't want to, I don't really want to use my show as a uh, show for uh, political debate or kind of raise the level of uh, debate uh, for politics. I just really want to talk about uh, EMS. So it really doesn't matter who or why. What matters is the safety factor. Some of you guys have probably seen the videos, the pictures, the stuff on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, the news, 
however you found out about this, maybe it was through GEMS or EMS1 or World or whatever, one of those news outlets that you get information, you've seen these pictures of how we stage and how dangerous it is. And EMS is inherently dangerous, uh, even uh, more so in today's society when, you know, there's that crazy factor. People are just, uh, they almost just don't care. There's a I don't care factor. Uh, and uh, I think this is very evident with uh, the stabbing, uh, the shootings of this last week. 14 people were killed, uh, 14 people were injured, and it was just ridiculous. They were talking about, I was watching uh, some video, they were saying there were just thousands and thousands of rounds uh, fired. Uh, and I'm not saying anything about guns or any of that stuff. So. I, that's not where I'm going with this. What I want you guys to be very vigilant about is pay attention to these scenes. We show up, there's 14, 15, 50 people shot, stabbed, dead, almost dead, whatever. We have to ask ourselves, and I want you guys to be very vigilant. One, uh, are we taking the correct safety measures? Police are there, but are we really making sure that that scene is safe? Is it secure? Are we parking in those uh, lanes of exit, are we leaving ourselves a way out? So if we have to jump back in the ambulance really quick, and sometimes those scenes get like that. They have to jump back in that ambulance and let's drive away to a safer location. You know, we hate to leave our patients, we hate to drive away from that scene, but sometimes your safety is more important. You can't provide care, and I'm not telling you guys to leave patients, and that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying look out for your own safety. Think about staging. Follow those. You guys use things like start and jump start for triage, but you also have those mass casualty plans. If you're not familiar with them, I encourage you, and they do vary from region to region, state to state, how they want you to interact with different agencies. So what I tell you guys is go Look through your protocols. Maybe sit down and talk with your supervisors. Get your service talking about what you're supposed to do, what you need to do in these situations. Whether it is something as, and I hate to say simple, but something as simple as you're on the scene and your partner get in, gets injured, what do they really want you to do? We don't often talk about this, but what do they want you to do? What should you do? How do you make this safe for you and for your partner? And what do you do with the patient if the patient's not the perpetrator? Uh, so, guys, be safe out there. Uh, if you are in an area where um, it's not safe or you just have those little hairs that stand up on the back of your neck. When in doubt, you just got to call. Get those police officers there. They have the training. They have the specialized equipment. Let them make the scene safe for you. Um, and with that, I think what I'm going to do is uh, let uh, you guys hear this week's rant from uh, the GT Medic. Uh, so, uh, if you're not familiar, the GT Medic, uh, and you can follow him, I believe it's at GT Medic on Twitter. I'll put the uh, contact information if you want to follow him on Twitter. Um, he's a paramedic. His name is uh, Jeremy uh, Gassert. Uh, he's a paramedic there in Pennsylvania. He and I are pretty good friends, and uh, uh, we've tried to keep each other out of trouble on a couple of occasions, uh, but a lot of fun, uh, and he has a pretty interesting, and uh, yeah, he's a, got a pretty good sense of humor. So, uh, without further ado, uh, not so much of a rant, much, uh, this is more of a uh, words of wisdom, so uh, check him out. Hey everybody, it's Jeremy, the GT Rheumatic, just reminding you that if your agency issues you body armor, wear it. I know it's bulky, I know it's hot, I know it's awkward to move around in, but uh, there was recently an incident here in Dolphin County, Pennsylvania, where a subject attacked a responding EMS crew 
slashing and stabbing, and the only thing that saved the responding crew member uh, from serious injury, um, from being stabbed in the chest, was their body armor. So please, I implore you, if it is issued to you, wear it. Uh, not just on those calls that you think are going to be dangerous, but wear it all the time. It's there for a reason, and it will save your life. But again, this is Jeremy, the GT Medic, just reminding you, stay safe, stay classy, and as always, Medic Up. Um, yeah, I don't know what the Medic Up is. i got to get him to explain that to me, but yeah, um, uh, he, he's right. You know, think about those safety measures you have and utilize them. If they're given to you, utilize them. Uh, and uh, don't just think about yourself. Look out for your uh, co-workers and uh, yeah, we all have that one partner we would probably uh, like to smack in the back of the head with a clipboard or give them the old gib slap. And that's okay. I understand it. But look out for each other. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, looks like this week We've talked about a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Got some words of wisdom from the old GT medic. Not a lot left, guys. Um, I want to thank you for watching. For those of you who have uh, gone to my website, MedicLifeTV.com, and are watching it there, thank you for doing so. Yes, it's still under construction. There's some pages that kind of probably don't make sense with some information on there. Um, you can still find uh, these because this is posted through YouTube and it's just hosted on my website, uh, <clears throat> Medic Life TV. Uh, you can still find me on my YouTube channel. Uh, these will be still uh, released on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker. If you're into the old podcast thing, if you don't want to sit here and look at my ugly mug, and <laughs> I get that. Uh, it's bad enough I'm having to sit here and see me in a screen off to the side a little bit. There. Um, <clears throat> if you guys have suggestions for show ideas, if you want to be a guest on the show, if you just want to go, hey, can you talk about this product? Or uh, maybe you have, uh, well, I don't know, uh, on my website you can uh, send me some uh, suggestions. Uh, until next time, guys, stay safe out there. Thanks. This has been another episode of Medic Live.